Hey guys, welcome back. I'm going to teach you how to make this uh, denim shader with just Blender. So not using anything from Substance Painter and just working directly in Blender because I know Substance Painter can be expensive. So I'll show you how to get this quality of uh, fabric detail using just Blender. The shader we will build will have a lot of controls in it so we can um, we can add wash details for example if I increase these intensities. We can control a lot of different things using this um, custom built shader. Um, so to start off with, we're going to need to go to Color 3D. Um, here is my pair of jeans that I'm going to work with that I built in Color. The, when you've built everything um, and you're good to go into Blender and you want to start to build this texture, um, we need to go into the UV editor space. Um, I covered this before in the series I did about Substance Paint, which I'll put a link to in the description. But for now, um, I've just set these UVs out quite simply. Um, I've spread it out across two tiles. Um, there is a lot of resolution on these zips on the side, so I get a nice texture resolution here. I've increased these. But in general, the rest of this denim fabric is to the same scale, and there's no overlap on any of these tiles. Um, so this layout's good. I've put all the trim zip and button pieces on the side by themselves. Um, and this is now ready to take into Blender. This is ready for export. Um, the first thing we want to do is um, export the, the textures that we're going to need. So with this um, that I've built already, if I look at it in an untextured mode, you can see that I've got um, puckering already applied to this model. So if I go to the simulation space, I have puckering applied to all these seams here. I also have top stitching applied to all these um, internal lines here. The thing to note is that my top stitching is all set to texture. So if you've got this set to OBJ, select your top stitch in the object browser here. I've got one for the bar tags and one for the actual stitches. And you want to check that these the type is set to texture so that we can export this as texture information and not as geometry. So now we we have this ready, we can export this. Um, I'll go back to the UV editor space for now. And I'm going to click this bake texture button here. There's three things that we want to bake. I want to take the, the base textures mainly for the, the zip teeth so that I can take this texture straight out of clone. I don't need to rebuild this in Blender. Um, I want to take the normal map, which is this one, um, so that I get the puckering detail as well. And then I want to take a height map of the stitches. So as you see now, if you look at this in normal map view up here, I can see my puckering, but I can also see my fabric grain, and I don't want to have this fabric grain visible in this export. So if you go to your fabric settings here, I choose my denim. And then I just come down to the normal map and I just press this delete button. My normal map that I'm going to export now has just the seam, uh, the seam lines that are created when we apply the stitching and the, uh, the puckering. If you want to increase the intensity of this puckering on this normal map, you can do it under the puckering settings here, select the puckering that you want. Um, look underneath this normal map setting here and increase the intensity and you'll see on this side you get a more intense uh, look of the puckering. Um, this might be a bit too intense for now so I'll just put this back down lower. And then this is ready to export into, um, into a folder that we can then bring into Blender. So to bake these textures, select this second icon here with the little camera picture on it. Click this icon and we want to take the diffuse and the normal because I want the diffuse textures for the zips and the base um, of the zip teeth. And then the normal map I want for the puckering and the rest of the stitching information here. So to do this, we need to go to a saving location. I will go to my project folder, which is empty right now. And I'll make a new folder called Clow Texture Exports. And I'll just call this base and then click save and I have all tiles selected here the rest of the settings I can generally leave as they are but just make sure you've got all tiles selected if you're working across multiple tiles 
and click save. And then if we look in our folder here, um, those textures are going to start to appear. So that's started to export now. The last thing we want to take is just the top stitching uh, as a height map. So in order to do this, we need to go to our fabric here, select all of our fabrics and just put those setting the color of this to black. So completely black, click apply. And then if we look here, our top stitching is white in color. So if I look here, my top stitching is all white, the, the base color of this. And now my fabric is all set to black. So if I go back to the um, the diffuse color here, what we're going to export now is a black and white map to use for the top stitching. So this can be used as a mask or as a bump map to make the impression of the stitches through texturing and not through geometry. So do the same before, click this um, make textures button here. Uncheck normal this time because we don't need the normal map as well. Uh, leave the other settings the same. We can go to the same folder and name this um, top stitch. Click save. And we just need the diffuse this time and click save. And then that will export into our folder as well. And now we can look at how we're going to export the geometry. So if I go back into my simulation space and I select all my geometry. I'm going to go down in the property editor on the right side and under miscellaneous, I'm going to make sure that my mesh type is set to quad so that this is easier to subdivide inside um, Blender if I need to use subdivision. So I turn this to quad if it's set to triangles by default. And then we can look at starting to export this. So I'm going to go to file, export, OBJ, and Go back to my folder here. And I'm just going to make a new folder here called Color OBJ Exports in my project folder. And name this Thick Jeans because we're going to do a thick export. So, what I mean by this is we have the option here thin, thick, welded, and everything. Um, I want to select all graphics and trims. I don't want to take my avatar, so uncheck this. Um, I want all the pattern pieces, so make sure this is checked. Unified UV coordinates needs to be checked. You can uncheck any of these texture exports because we've already done them. Um, check thick. Select the scaling as meters. This will be correct scaling for Blender. And generally, the rest you can leave as it is. Um, click OK. And this will export one time as a thick object. Do the same again. And this time do thin unwelded jeans. And we're going to do thin unweld. Everything else will stay the same in this window and click OK. And then we're going to do again welded. Thin welded. Here, thin weld, and the, leave the rest of the settings the same. Um, these are just going to be useful for us at different stages in this process, so it's nice to have all three of them. Um, and this is now ready to take into uh, back into Blender. So I'm just going to change this back to white so I can see my denim fabric back again, and I'm going to save this in my project folder as my jeans base and just save that here as well so I can always come back to this file that I've been exporting from. So if we now go back to Blender, I open a new Blender window I'm working with version 3.6 which is just opening up we go. Um, this is version 3.6, so the latest one, um, just in case any anything is different as you guys are working. And I'm going to go to File, Import, OBJ, go to my project folder, go to OBJ Exports, 
and they're not in there. They are in the texturing folder, okay. Select all of them, all three. You can leave these import settings as they are and just click import OBJ and then we'll have three objects imported here. Um, I can select this cube and press X to delete it. And then we can take a look at what we've just imported. So there's thick, thin, welded and unwelded. I'm just gonna select all three of these, press M on the keyboard and make a collection and call this garments just to start to keep things organized over here. Um, if you select this little drop down arrow in your viewport shading options here and set it to random, um, it will give each of the pair of jeans a different color. And just to explain, this is the thick one. Our mesh has thickness to it, so this might be nicer to use for rendering. And then this one is the unwelded one. So in edit mode, if I look at all these pieces, they are not welded or connected in any way, which is nice to bake our mesh maps with. And then if I look at the welded one in edit mode, um, everything is connected. So if I move any of these pieces, all these seams are welded together. So this could be useful for rigging or for animation. So I brought everything because we don't know what we might need. So to start off with, I'm just going to work with um the thin exports and i'm just going to put these back in their original position so if i put zero in all these locations we can put everything back where it needs to be so let's work with the thin unwelded for now as an example um we're just going to apply the basic textures from um clo everything that we've just exported and what we need as well if I actually go back to my close scene is this denim uh, image texture here. So we can find this. If I choose my fabric on the side, I look under my texture parameters here and I select these four, I, these four square icons together. I can navigate to my, the local folder where this clo file is being saved and I can take out these um, base textures and I just need the denim normal map and the denim base fabric which is what's going to build up the the surface of this denim so grab go to navigate to this folder copy these out and save them you know on on a folder where you know where they are in your project pile and then we can import all of this into blender so that's the the last step of the thing that we need to take out of color is this base material so back in Blender, I'm going to right click on this join on the side of the screen here, which, you know, gives me this um, vertical split and I'm just splitting my screen in half. I'm going to look at this in shaded view like this. And right now we have nothing applied. We just have a white mesh. This side, I'm going to change uh, this to shading editor. So click this icon here in the middle, choose shading editor, and now we can start to edit this material. So base color is going to control the base color, but we need to see what we're working with. So if we look at the materials that we've got in the material section here, we've got a number of them called material, and we've got zipper, metal, pocket, and denim. And I'm just going to take the one called metal and shuffle it to the bottom underneath zipper by pressing this down arrow. And then from the bottom, I'm just going to start with this one and press the minus button until they've all disappeared and we end up with metal. And what this will do is connect all of our metal objects. If I change the coloring to red, you'll see like all the little metal tips of the zips, the zip pullers, the buttons and everything are now all in this one metallic slot. The zippers, if I just apply a color, are here, they have their own material slot. The pocket fabric inside, if I take a look here, will have its own fabric slot as well. And we have the denim, so that's gonna be this one. Um, to start off with, we wanna just change this bottom view here. So again, if I click this little clock icon, that's the current timeline, and change this to asset browser. And I go to, no, I go to file browser navigate to my project folder 
and then let's look at what we can start to add in here. So I've got the base textures from Clow, the color and the normal map. I'm just gonna drag these one by one into my node space. So the base denim texture and the base normal map. Just drag these across. And let's connect the base color to the base color here. So I'm working in the denim slot. I've got the base denim material and I'm just connecting this into the base color. And you see that it's really large in scale. But for now, this is fine. We can fix that. I'm going to press Shift and A on the keyboard, search for a normal map node, drop that between my image texture and the shader, and connect the color to color and normal to normal. And now our normal map is connected. Ensure that this color space option here is set to non-color and not sRGB. Um, and now we have our normal map applied. To change the scaling of these textures, I'm going to press, I'm going to select this and I'm going to make sure that in edit, preferences, add-ons, I'm going to look for node. And you want to check that node wrangler is checked, turned on, and this is active. And this is going to make the process a bit easier to do. So with node wrangler activated, choose this node and press control and T. And that will create a mapping node here. And you want to connect the same mapping node to our normal map as well. So these two textures are now being mapped by this node here. And this is connected to UV. So it's going to work with our UV map that we exported from Club. So if you look under scale and under X and Y, I enter the same value, 3 and 3, our texture has become slightly smaller. Um, to make this a bit simpler, you can right and click and click in your X scale, right click, click copy as new driver, and in Y, click paste as new driver. And no, copy as new driver, where is it? paste driver. So if I now enter five in here, that's just going to enter it in both boxes. So I'll set this to five. So I get a nice finer grain on my denim texture, maybe six. And then we can start to build up um, the top stitching and the puckering onto this as well. So what would be good to do is take our metal material here, turn this to like a gray, maybe a blue gray, turn our metallic back to all the way up, start to bring the roughness down. And now we have a nice shiny metallic buttons. And for the zipper, very simply, we can go to our project folder, look at our texture exports from Clo, bring the diffuse texture over. So choose the first tile of the diffuse texture and drop this in here. By default, this is going to come in as a single image and we want to check it's being used as a UDIM. So check UDIM tiles and then connect this into color. And now our zip teeth are being projected into our zip material. And I'll do the same for the normal map. So drag the first one in, set this to UDIM and then change the color space to non-color. And then just quickly add in a normal map node color into color, normal into normal. And now there should be a normal map connected across these teeth as well. So this is what we exported out of Clo as the texture baking process. And the last thing we can connect here in our denim would be the top stitch. So if I just drag my top stitch map over the black and white one that we created, I, I will bring this down here underneath Set this also to non-color, press Shift and A and search for a bump node. Connect color into height and then connect normal into normal. And now our original normal map has been kicked out, which is not a problem because we can connect this normal map to the bump normal input here and just shuffle this across. And now this will use both of them together. Um, this isn't being used now, our top stitch, as a UDIM texture, so make sure you set single image to UDIM tiles. And we will have now like a bump where all of our top stitching should be. Um, to set a nice color to this, so our top stitches have their own color, 
I'm just going to press Shift and A and search for a mix color. If you're using an older version of Blender, it might be called Mix, and then you just need to select color under that as well. And in the top, I'm going to put my base material. And in the bottom, I'm just going to set a like orangey color for the top stitches for now. I'm going to take the result of this mix and connect it to base color. And you'll see now that this is being blended, like my base texture and my orange color are being blended together through this factor here. So this mixes these two colors together. I've got this set to mix. If instead of using this mix here, I just connect my texture map, uh, my the mask, the height map that I've made, I connect that to the factor. You'll see now that this orange color is just being projected where my top stitching is. So if I change this color to a darker texture, like a tobacco kind of brown top stitching color maybe, this can be how we control the coloring of our top stitches. The last thing that we could do to just make this look nicer, if we zoom in a bit, they look a bit blocky. So to fix that, I'm just gonna add in, I'm gonna start to shuffle all this back because we're gonna end up with a lot of nodes eventually. Um, if you have no experience with this node space and this is your first time here, I'll link some videos in the description um, that I've made before about working with the node system as that might make it a lot easier for some of you guys. Um, so for now, if I just press shift and A and I search for a ramp and I take a color ramp, I drop this here and I'm going to hold control on my keyboard and take all these outputs and connect them to the color output of the ramp. Okay. And then to the ramp, I'm going to connect that top stitching image texture that we've got into the input of this, the factor. And now if I use these sliders, I can slide down and slide up and just try to improve a little bit the definition of these stitches. You see how sliding this black slider down will make them a little bit rounder. And sliding this white one up will make them a little bit more pronounced in the, the definition. So this is then uh, like a kind of definition control we can use for the top stitching. But we've basically applied everything now except the uh, normal map for the puckering, which we can do in the, the next video. For now, I think this is um, just a quick introduction of how to get your, you know, your base textures out of Clo and into Blender. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to layer up um, everything like we would do in Substance Painter um, with the baked maps and the baked textures and everything on top of this so that we get a really nice detail in the end. So I'll see you guys in the next video.